and we are live hello there after i told everybody in the world that i would probably have to cancel because there was something going on with the network or the router or i don't even know what but i figured it out and here i am so i have no idea how many people are going to be here but i see that julie is here yay and so is linda hi linda so um anyway and denisha hey denisha yay so i'm glad to see everybody so um yeah my notification probably went out when i went live to let people know that i was doing this after all because i did i posted something saying that i might have to cancel because there was some sort of connection thing going on but i'm not canceling and here i am like it or not so i'm so glad to see people here i'm always glad to do this because i love doing this sometimes i will come into a live stream that's scheduled and i'm going oh god i'm so tired do i have to do this or i'm so cranky do i have to do this and then i never regret doing it because i always leave in a better mood than when i began oh thank you about the beanie i'm wearing it because i look a fright without it uh, Honestly, I was just taking a nap. And I have a most frightful bedhead. I really, really need a, a haircut. This is, uh, actually, it's my own pattern. I'm not going to take it off to show you, but it's, uh, it's rice stitch there. You can see. Hey, Lauren Jordan. Uh, oh, I need to turn off that night butt notification don't i because it's past november 12th isn't it um i'm so glad we're here okay top of the hour hey granny d top of the hour we always do just you know announcements uh that sort of thing want to go over my schedule uh my weekly schedule as you all know most of you probably know it as well as i do on tuesdays i do these topic tuesdays um oh denisha i hope you like it hey frenchie um topic tuesdays on tuesdays wednesday free for all at six o'clock immediately following granny d thursday i usually don't post anything although i won't say never fridays lately i've been doing a brief live stream um, at 4 p.m. Eastern, just before Grady D. Sometimes I will substitute a, um, is Sabrina here? Did I miss Sabrina coming in? Oh, gosh. Hey, Sabrina. Yay. Um, and Kelly is here, too. Uh, okay. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, Lauren, welcome in. I'm glad it's your first visit. Um, I hope it won't be your last. Okay. Uh, Fridays, I usually do a, a live stream, although sometimes I will substitute a recorded thing instead of a live stream. Saturdays, I usually don't do anything. I used to do shout out Saturdays, but uh, not lately. Sundays, I have a Sunday reading, which is always poetry. Um don't get a lot of views, but I do it anyway because I enjoy it. Mondays, I have my Monday men. I interview men in yarn, um, knitters, crocheters, uh, yarn dyers. Um, and I meet some of the most wonderful people doing that. Um, and those uh, seem to be pretty popular. And then we're back to Tuesdays. So... Um, Let's see. Oh, hey, Sandy. Oh, I, I hope... Is VJ here? Hi, VJ. I'm sorry. I hope I don't miss anybody who comes in. Because uh, I do that sometimes. It just happens. 
Yes, Sabrina, I would agree. I loved him. It was a pleasure. I, I didn't want to stop. Um, uh, that was um, Garencio Marquez, who does Casa de Larquez, who uh, he's in Southern California. He does wonderful stuff. Um, I would encourage you to go and look at my um, uh, interview because he's just wonderful. He and so charming and so outgoing and such a smile. And um, it was so much fun. Um, I have one coming up. Um, you know, a general observation, not a judgment. Some guys are more outgoing than others. Um, some guys are more comfortable on camera than others. It's not a judgment, it's just an observation. So some of my um, interviews are longer than others. So the one I have coming up is you know, a really, really creative guy, except he was a little bit more shy. Um, and um, I enjoyed talking with him. I hope he enjoyed talking with me. And I hope that um, um, that you will enjoy that one. I have one that I'm uh, planning to record on Friday. I think that'll be great fun. Um, and I'm always looking for more, always looking for more. I'm always trolling the streets of Instagram and YouTube and stuff. Anyway, so what else have we got going on? Uh, I want to let you know that, um, I do have Ravelry for my patterns. I have Etsy for my merch. Sooner or later, I'm going to transition my merch over to a different vendor, but for now, Etsy is where it's at. Um, night. Oh, thank you so much. Oh my goodness, that gives me the opportunity to do this. Daniel just gave me a super chat. Oops. There you go. I didn't even realize you were in the room, Daniel, but um, you're always welcome, of course. You know that. Um, or it was actually a super sticker, but thank you so much. I don't know what 99 pence equals in US, but changes daily, I know. So I don't know. But every little bit helps. Um, especially since last week I did three live streams and I forgot to enable monetization on all of them. So if anybody wanted to support me last week, they weren't able to, um, you know, um, I have to put it in perspective. I say that I don't ask for money, but I sort of am. At, at the same time, this is not feeding the hungry. This is not uh, housing and clothing the poor. This is not social justice we're talking about. But at the same time, if you want to show me some love, I'm not going to stop you. It's all perspective. It's all perspective. I have some wonderfully generous people who watch me, who have shown me support and love. And I am very grateful for that. And I will never stop being grateful for that. I don't take anything for granted. So, um, hey, Sandy, I'm glad to see you here. Oh, Kelly, I hope you enjoy your package. I forget exactly which item I sent you, but I hope you enjoy it. Um, let's see what else we got. Linda, I did go back and monetize them after the fact, but it's not the same. 
you know, in the moment, that's when, hey, Jackie, glad to see you. Um, your husband thinks the crochet is confusing. I, I think the crochet is simple. I think that knitting is a mystery, but then that's just me. Hey, left is right, Sandy. Gosh, I'm so glad to see everybody here. I was so afraid I was going to have to cancel because I had some issues with, um, with connection to the internet um, earlier today. But it all worked out, apparently. I don't know what I did right, but I did something right, so here we are. Well, okay, today's topic is tools. And what are your favorite tools in uh, working with in whatever your yarn craft is, whether it's crochet or knitting or both? Oh, Sandy, I'm glad to see that, that uh, you're on YouTube a lot. Um, and... Um, Hey, Angela. Hey, Deborah. I'm always glad to see people in here. Yeah. Do you know what? It's interesting. A lot of people's, um, a lot of people's hobbies or special interests, they do require a specific, very narrow um, um, field of knowledge that they really, really dive into with great enthusiasm. But sometimes they don't understand other kinds of very narrow or, you know, similarly narrow fields of, of interest. Okay, Linda. Linda likes clover hooks and knit pro circular needles. Now, as far as hooks go, I actually, I have a wide variety of brands and sizes and types. I am not really Sandy, you thought I meant hardware tools. How long have you known me? My goodness gracious. Wow, Lauren, that's, hey, Joanne. Um, those are good. Um, that's quite a list of favorite tools there. Now, I, I'm not really brand faithful as far. Hey, Dana. I'm not really brand faithful as far as, as hooks go. I really, I go more for, for how it feels to use. And a lot of brands feel good. And there are some that don't. And... You know, uh, there are some brands that um, um, they have within the brand, they have different, um, different offerings that just don't, uh, some of them are better than others. I tend to go for a nice handle. This, I believe, is a clover hook. It's one of my favorites. This is an L. But it's got a nice handle. It's it's thick enough. So um, this is another one of my favorites. This is one of those uh, ones um, with a, a, a lighted hook. Uh, I don't use the light very often. I just use it because I like the way the handle feels. If the handle feels good in my hand and on a knife grip, then I like the hook. Uh, unless there's something wrong with the hook itself. Usually I go for a tapered hook. Um, but, you know, I know that there are people who are almost frantic in their, their passion for uh, specific, um, sp specific brands, specific types of hooks. I do have one, no, I have two furls hooks. I like using those because they work for my knife grip as well. I don't like them enough to pay 20 or more dollars per hook. Both of these were gifts. 
Now, this is another kind that I have. I think this was, this came from Hobby Lobby. I think it was called Yarnology or something. Um, I like this book because it's, it's, now I have a ton of these narrow aluminum hooks. I know some people prefer these hooks. I'm not one of those people. I will use it if all of my other hooks of a particular size that I need are in use for something else. But I do prefer the ones with a with a better handle. Oh, where is it? Ooh. I think it's in a project bag somewhere. I recently got one. If I could reach it right now, I might show it to you. I recently got one with a handmade wooden hook, a wooden handle, that was quite nice. I liked it. Um. Well, Sandy Hook Hook, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, there is no right or wrong in this. I'm just telling you what I prefer. Everybody has their own uh, preference. So. Linda, yeah, I think that's my um, observation too. Oh, Mama G gear, the tow truck. I hope nothing is wrong. Well, of course something is wrong if you're waiting for the tow truck. I hope it's not disastrous, whatever it was. Oh, excuse me. So, I don't know why. So, as far as hooks go, but there are other gadgets. I was recently given this cute little notions bag it's all in puppy fabric let's see here's the label so you can see who it was made by okay so much love.com i can't remember who gave it to me i have a mind like a sieve but inside this bag, I have this basic yarn threader. I have this fancier needle. Okay, where is my hand? Needle threader. This one was a gift from Gwenny Square. Gwenny Square with a W. I have these wool needles you see the little uh, plastic loops at the end you can use those especially if you are sewing in loose ends with a thicker uh, yarn because uh, a thicker yarn won't always work with a normal tapestry hook um clippers i don't use them much seam ripper I didn't use that much, but I had it. Let's see. That's about what's in my, um, this notions bag. I love the notions bag. Oh, I'm such a bad friend. I can't remember who gave me this notions bag. This is a pencil bag from Staples. A ton of these standard plastic stitch markers. I cannot live without these. And a few tapestry hooks for sewing in loose ends. That's what goes in there. Uh, that's pretty much it for tools and tape measures. I've got a couple of tape measures. Um, for crochet, that's really all I need for tools. What about you? What do you guys use? Let's see. 
Okay. Lauren is saying she does like the straight aluminum hooks. It's Again, it's a matter of taste. There's no right or wrong. Oh, Dana loves the Notions bag. I do too. I feel so bad for forgetting who gave it to me. I have a number of bags that I use as like um, project bags. This one... This one does, says, does a, does a bear knit in the woods? Which is a little bit of a takeoff on a common thing. A few other bags like that. I have a really cute one that my ex made for me when he got into sewing. It's with puppy fabric. The lining is in purple. As you, you can see how well he knows me. Um... I don't have it right here in the room right now. I also have a notebook. I don't have a special notebook, a planner like the ones that Crojo sells. I just have a regular notebook with a few decals. Daniel gave me these decals. But I make notes about patterns that I'm working on, patterns that I want to develop in the future, that sort of thing. Um, let's see, I do have a planner that I use sporadically. Sometimes I use it more than, than other times. Oh, Sabrina, I'm sorry to see you go. I'm always glad when you're here. Okay, Frenchie, I'm not sure what you're talking about, what you leave on your chest. Oh, stitch markers. Oh, I always make sure I have far too many stitch markers because otherwise I have none. Lauren doesn't like cheap ergonomic hooks. Um, I don't know which specific brands she means, I mean, there are some ergonomic hooks that I like more than others. I tend to like the ones that I have and use them often. Um, and the ones that I don't use, they get relegated. Also, for keeping my hooks, I use mugs. You know, I don't need anything fancy. I have two mugs plus uh, what was intended to be a pencil can with partitions in it. And that's enough. I don't need any more hooks. I don't need any more hook storage. Um... Linda agrees about having tons of, of stitch markers. You have to. An office supply spinning caddy. That sounds interesting. So anyway. What other kinds of tools should we be talking about? I feel like now what do you guys use for storage? I have like several different baskets and storage bins and that sort of thing. I'm not, hey Gigi, I'm not really very um, organized in that way. Um, but I can usually find what I need to find, usually. Hey Deborah. Mm, yeah, little plastic box for your stitch markers, yeah. For buttons, actually, I have, okay, one more thing. This is my file box. 
I have the patterns that I have downloaded and printed out in here. It's actually a little heavy. I also have, I'm not going to show it to you, but it's a, a sewing basket that my sister gave me that also is useful for storing a lot of things. And this is another Notions bag, which coincidentally also has dogs on it. Funny that. This one came from my ex while we were still together. And in this one, I have buttons. Buttons galore. Uh, tons and tons of buttons. Let's see. I think these are gorgeous. I just haven't figured out what to use them for. I think these are gorgeous too. So I have tons and tons and tons of buttons. Um, but you know, a few other things in that sewing basket, but I don't use the sewing basket all that much. I have, this is an older, Actually, it says clover on it. This is an older hook storage thingy that folds over. I haven't used it in a long, long time. This is a little case. It was a gift. You can tell it was a gift because it has cats on it. But it has like these storage areas in it. I haven't used this one. Oh, it's got gadgets inside still. I haven't used this one in a while. Let's see, what is this? It's... Stitch markers of a type that I don't like and hooks and, and needles and threads that I don't really use. But, you know, that's the sort of thing. Use this. That. That. This is also where I keep the two parts of a broken glass hook that I once had. This is the one where they said, oh, if it ever breaks, just send it back and we'll fix it. When it broke, I contacted them and said, oh yeah, we'll fix it for a cost. Yeah, nothing is free. Which actually that should not be expected in life because nothing really is free. But I was put off enough that I never sent it in to get fixed. And honestly, it wasn't as good to use as some of my other hooks of the same size. Okay. Oh, Linda has two big sweet tins full of buttons. Yeah, of course. Deborah has a, a whip caddy that keeps all of her... Cotton on one shelf, an ongoing whip and the hu hubby blanket on another. BJ uses stacking totes and stacking drawers, so do I. Dana uses trolleys. I have had those in the past, but I think I lost I lost them in the divorce. Um But I have a bunch of these big storage, plastic storage bins that were on sale one day at Walmart. And so I bought five of them. And one of them is full of UFOs. One of them, well, actually two of them, I could probably consolidate. One of them is going to be full of stuff that I'm going to, Actually, when I go to this um, fiber retreat next 
Next Wednesday is when I leave for this retreat, guys. Can you believe it? It's the time is drawing nigh. Nearer and nearer draws the time, the time that shall surely be. Um, so when I go, I can take a bunch of finished objects and try to unload them on other people. I mean, bless other people with them. Um, and then as a fundraising thing for their scholarship fund, for their, on their ongoing scholarship fund for retreats. And then those that I don't sell there, I'll just bring back and donate. <laughs> Lauren says if she can't find a stitch marker, she's nearly 100% guaranteed to find six in the sofa. I believe that. I believe that. I've probably got a bunch all around the, the chair where I'm sitting right now because this is where I do most of my crochet. Um, Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry about yawning. And I just had a nap. Okay. Nightbot is telling you about uh, a discount code that expired on Sunday to go to Ravelry. But please do go to Ravelry. I've got 21 patterns there. Cameron feels very strongly about this. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, I've got 21 patterns at... Um, at Ravelry, so I hope that uh, you will go and take a look at them, because, you know, just this week I sent out all of the packages from my Labor Day Marathon. Let us see, I was surprised. Plus, I have a road trip coming up. Plus, I'm poor to start with. Once again, this is not feeding the hungry. This is not housing and clothing the poor. But I have a lot of people who watch me who have been very loving to me in the past, and I am very grateful. Ah! Deborah thinks her, uh, says her cat thinks everything belongs on the floor. I have to tell you, uh, this, this uh, room that I use, it's sort of a... Uh, Uh, it was intended to be like an unused bedroom that becomes a, a, an office. So it's got French doors rather than a regular bedroom door. Um, and sometimes the dog comes in and yes, I love my dog. We've had him for almost two weeks now and he is wonderful. But, um, uh, but he comes in. And he sniffs and sniffs and sniffs because he thinks there are treats in here. So I have to close the door sometimes. I Well, I always close the door when I'm recording because someone else in the house likes the TV at high volume and likes those violent TV shows with people screaming and dying. Um, and then also um, I... I close the door to keep the dog out but sooner or later he's going to figure out that he can push the door open and then um when i come in here with food actual people food to eat i'll close the door because he'll follow me because he knows i have food um and he know he has we've tried to teach him he's not going to get people food from us but he still thinks he always, he, he will. Do you know what's fun? I do have, uh, Deborah says, you always have treats, right? I do. You know what's fun? I can toss one of these across the floor. It will slide under the door and out into the hallway. And he won't know where it came from. I'll try that right now. I'll probably miss completely. As expected, I did. There's a reason I was never an athlete. Let's see what's my phone say. Nothing useful. Um. Anyway, okay, let's do this. Okay, there's the StreamYard link. If anybody wants to come up, 
There's my Ravelry link. Thank you, Nightbot. Um, if I say it, I manifest it. I'm filthy rich. Hey, Roseanne, I just sent your package yesterday. God, I'm never sending anything to Canada again. Um, oh, God. So I just put the link up if anybody wants to, um, uh, wants to come up and join me. We've been talking about tools. Um, so let's see, what other kinds of announcements do I have? Usually, since we're, hey, Divergent, glad to see you. Um, we're at about the half hour. So I usually start off talking about my um, schedule, which everybody knows already. Deborah, do you know I have sent packages within like a week or two of each other to like uh, Canada and to Europe that were very similar packages and it costs more to send them to Canada than to Europe. Um, but anyway, let's talk about my schedule. On Tuesdays, I have topic Tuesdays at two o'clock. I will do that next week. On Wednesdays, I have Wednesday free for alls at six o'clock following Granny D. Next week, Wednesday is my first travel day. So I will not do a Wednesday free for all next Wednesday. I will likely do a spontaneous live stream later that evening just as a daily catch up. It might conflict with other people, I don't know. Thursdays, I usually don't post anything. Thursday is the day I will arrive at the retreat center and everything gets started. I will, I'm hoping to do like late night catch ups and live streams of no more than an hour every, every night that I'm there. I think that'll be more successful than if I tried to do vlogs because I'm not very good at vlogging, but I really like doing live streams. Um, oh, which crystal is here? Oh, Divergent Crafter is crystal. I can never remember people's first names. Um, that's lucky I can remember their screen names. Yeah, Lauren is agreeing that postage everywhere is expensive. And actually, even within the U.S., they have risen, they have increased the rates temporarily because in anticipation for upcoming holiday postage traffic, um, which I think is just lovely, don't you? Um Maybe a few um, fewer bombs and a few uh, a few more dollars towards essential services. But what do I know? I know nothing clearly. Um, let's see. By the way, people have have mentioned this hat that I'm wearing. I'm wearing it because I look upright today. I just took a nap and I look really awful. Um, I have a horrible bedhead. But this is uh, my own um design this is a rice stitch thing and um actually uh that gives me reason to bring this this topic up hey joanne oh this one too joanne likes this hat honestly i think this is a i found this in a bin of finished objects i'm pretty sure this is a bag of day hat I have no idea what the yarn is. I have no idea what the pattern is, but I'm pretty sure that it's a bag of day hat. I, I love it. I'm never going to part with this hat. I was actually going to wear it today, but I decided to wear the one that I have on instead. Um, yes, 
Yes, Jackie, I like to reuse things like that. Oh, Frenchie is in Canada. She sent something to Daniel in the UK and Leanne is in Louisiana, correct? Um, postage is a bad word. Anyway, should I ever win the lottery? I'll just look at things by hand to Linda and to Daniel and to Lady Bird and to um, Jay Hook, Reggie, and um, all of our friends and to Whisper. Wouldn't that be fun? Wouldn't that be fun? I would love that. Cardboard rolls. Actually, that sounds very useful. I've done that before. Yeah. Um, Lauren, I didn't realize you were in the UK, too. You're in Nottinghamshire. Nottinghamshire. It's, it's funny. The Brits, they, they, they will sort of abbreviate shir, uh, shire into shire. Nottinghamshire. Sort of like in the southern U.S., we'll abbreviate Ville to Vol. It's Asheville or Nashville or Knoxville. And you can tell someone who is not southern by how they pronounce those cities. And it's funny. There's a um, fantastic opera by the American composer Carla Floyd. Um with an aria called the wind the trees on the mountain um and and it talks about nashville and Asheville and um and you can tell who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't because some of them will go nashville and Asheville instead of nashville and Asheville. Nottinghamshire. Exactly, exactly. Now, I love language and I love accents. I really do. And I am very much an Anglophile. Um, so I love watching um, things. I, I, I also love 19th century Brit lit. I cannot deny it. Um, and I cannot get away from it, and I will never be ashamed of it. But, um, of course, uh, in most 19th century Brit lit, you, you run across people from a more privileged class. And you learn, actually, I, I learn a lot from watching. Um, there are some really great um, British language scholars on YouTube. Um, and Greenville. Powdersville. Well, yeah, exactly. In uh, um, uh, Deborah, in North Carolina, we have a town that looks like it's a Robersonville, but we say rubble or something like that. Or rubble. Yeah. So, yeah, I love language and accents and things. Um, I think they're great. I really do. Um, except for when I can't understand them. Um, I remember, uh, oh gosh, this was in the 90s, it had to be. When the movie Train Spotting came out, which was made by Scottish actors with a heavy Scottish accent. And they had to redub it for most of the US. In New York, where I was living at the time, 
we got to hear the um, original track, the original sound, but they had to redub it for most of the U.S. because they couldn't understand such a thick, heavy Scottish accent. And I love that sort of thing. I love those heavy accents. Okay, Nightbot is telling you not to forget to hit the subscribe and thumbs up. I'm also telling you not to forget to hit the cash app, or not the cash app, the super chat button. Um, you will have my deepest gratitude if you do, because I just paid a bunch in postage, and I've got a road trip coming up. Um, and this road trip is really to improve the channel, enrich myself, have a lot of fun, and improve the channel. So, yes. I need... Oh, I, know, I don't have Nightbot open at the moment. I'll disable that, that timer on Nightbot when we're done. Uh, Sing Street? I don't believe I know that channel. Now, I used to love, 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 love watching videos of early Coronation Street because it was revolutionary in its time. And Coronation Street and I both began existence at about the same time. So it's pretty damn old. But it was revolutionary in its time because it was about a northern city in, in England with northern actors and northern writers and northern sensibility that people in what they call, you know, when in, in England, when they talk about a, a, um, a southern accent, they mean a more posh London type accent as opposed to the, the more regional accents of Manchester or Liverpool or, or Yorkshire, that sort of thing. Um, so Coronation Street was amazing because from the very beginning, it just gripped you with the human stories. And I loved those characters on Coronation Street from the 60s, you know, Annie Walker, Ina Sharples, um, Elsie Tanner, Hilda Ogden. Oh, my God. Hilda Ogden was, I think, at the time that she left Coronation Street, she was like the most. Hey, Laurie Armstrong. She was like the most beloved character on British TV. I think she was voted, something like that. Um, and, I, and it's funny because the actress who played Hilda Ogden, who was very far from posh, the actress herself was very, very posh. And by posh, we mean fancy, privileged, you know, um, wealthy, well-educated kind of background so it's just amazing the skills of these people and also some of the other people who have passed through coronation street if you know are you being served and if you don't then i don't know why i know you because are you being served is one of the very best britcoms ever mrs slocum molly sugden she was a recurring character on Coronation Street as uh, um, an innkeeper, um, which is what they would call a proprietress of a, a proprietor, proprietress of what they call a public house um, or a pub. She was a competing innkeeper with Annie Walker, and Annie Walker was the proprietress of, with her husband, of the Crown Vic. No, Crown Vic was EastEnders of the um, Rover's Return. Um, and um, 
I don't know why I know all of this stuff. I don't know anything about current TV, and I'm okay with that. But, you know, 1960s Coronation Street, 1980s EastEnders. I mean, they all became like, they all turned into days of our lives. And, you know, no one wants to see that. But the early days were fabulous for both of them, Coronation Street and EastEnders, because they had a voice. They were unique. But then they, then they got commercial and they turned into days of our lives. Days of our lives even used to be a whole lot better than it is, but it got commercial. I mean, some of the legacy characters and actors from Days of Our Lives um, who are now long gone. But of course, I grew up with Days of Our Lives. Um, and um, anyway. Uh, Lauren, it's a, Lauren's never been a fan of the soaps. It's a particular taste. You can become dependent on them, or you can just take them or leave them. It's a particular taste, and there's no right or wrong about that either. Only why. I'm going to put up the link again if anybody wants to come up. Uh, okay. But I love, I love the... Um, I love British entertainment a whole lot more than American. I mean, there's some good American entertainment. There's some good writing out there. But there's, you have to search so hard to find it. Yeah, actually, I didn't mind Murder, She Wrote. I liked it. I love Angela Lansbury. She can do no wrong. I mean, I would put Angela Lansbury right beside Helen Mirren and Judy Dench and Maggie Smith. The Edge of Night. Oh, yeah. Guiding Light. Oh, uh, Julie. I remember one time. I mean, I've had extended periods of unemployment before when I was like watching daytime TV all the time. There was one called The Bold and the Beautiful. Oh, bye, Linda. I'm glad you were here. Thank you for coming. Mm. Exactly, Lauren. The TV here is controlled by the sister. My sister and I, we're both in our late 50s. We share our late mother's house. Um, she controls the TV. I control the computer room. I don't control anything because actually everything belongs to her. I'm pretty much painless. But anyway, oh, what did I start to say? Uh, oh, there was one time uh, when I was, you know, unemployed and watching a lot of daytime TV. I was watching The Bold and the Beautiful every day. And someone, um, I don't know what the situation was, but he sat down and turned on the TV during the daytime and he was like flicking the um, um, the, the remote and going through channel, channel, channel. And he came upon the theme music for his own soap opera. Um, and he made such a grimace and immediately turned away. I thought it was hysterically funny. The bold and the beautiful, yeah. Do you know, I think it was in my first year in New York City. Um, I, I got a ticket to the nosebleed, the cheap seats at the Met, the Metropolitan Opera. I don't even remember what I saw, but I saw it in the audience in the same section, so she was just as cheap as I was, certainly not as poor, um, an actress I had grown up watching on soaps. 
and I was both impressed and afraid. I didn't want to go up to this woman of a certain age and say, oh, I grew up watching you on TV because that's not really a compliment, is it? Because you're just accenting the fact that she's a woman of a certain age. Actually, no, I wish I had because it would have been nice. But then lots of times. Do you know, actually, that's the thing about being in New York City, you never know when you're going to see a celebrity. I saw William H. Macy on the sidewalk. I saw... Who knows how Carly Simon was? Um, saw Angela Lansbury in the audience of a, a show that I... A Broadway show that I saw. That sort of thing. It's wild. Oh, Lauren, I agree with you. Gordon Ramsay is not a cooking sh Well, at least the Gordon Ramsay that we get in the U.S. is not a cooking show. The Gordon Ramsay that we get in the, in the U.S. is produced to make him really, really mean and controversial because that's what they think is good TV over here. I have seen other um, Gordon Ramsay videos where he is not that way at all. If you see him in his own home with his own family, he is not that way at all. So, you know, who is the real Gordon Ramsay? Hmm. Ice cream. Really good ice cream. I'm going to do a thing about them. Exactly. Exactly, Deborah. Um, Jackie says when she started working again, she stopped watching the soaps. Actually, I think there was a time when I had the flu and I was at home a lot. Um, that I watched a lot of soaps. And then when I went back to work, I started taping them. And... Um, I would tape, I think I would tape Days of Our Lives and General Hospital five days a week. That, watching that after the fact, it becomes a burden. Well, actually, Deborah. That's, that's, that's true. He is very good with his kids, with his family. Um, he tailors his behavior to his audience. Um, and I can, I can see how in certain situations he would expect the people he's working with to know better than what they're doing. Um, I still don't support abusive behavior. I mean, I have, um, in myself, um, I used to write a lot of opera reviews and I would always tailor what I was writing to the level of the performance because I would see like university or conservatory level performances. I would see young professional groups. I would see very high level professional performances. And so I was more gentle with um, like the conservatory and the young professional people, because I would always see promise in the in the, the singers. And I would say almost always of my favorite ones that I would like to hear more of them in coming years. But sometimes if I was reviewing something at the Met or some other very high level um, 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 opera house, and there was something that, that didn't appeal to me. If there was a singer who was just not right, 
if there was um, a production that just didn't seem like it was on the professional level that it should be for the for the house. I mean, I remember, and often, I remember there was there's there was one regional house where I have still have a very good relationship with the um, uh, the guy who runs the place, and I have great admiration for this guy because he brought this company out of bankruptcy and into um, you know uh, functionality and um, hey proverbs and um, really doing very well as a performing arts group but and I have seen many perfectly wonderful things at his um, opera company but there was one that I saw and I thought the production just looked like high school theatricals and I could not resist saying that and I was afraid that saying that would alienate this friend fortunately it didn't but it was I, I, I mean I praised the things that deserved praise, mostly the singing, uh, but you know the production values were they were high school, and I just felt bad about it because on a professional level that's just not right. Um. I actually, I need to get back in, hey Jane, I need to get back into writing about music because um, it's been a while since I have. But frankly, it's been a while since I've seen a streaming performance online that really inspired me to want to write. A lot of them were like very good, but not exciting enough to make me want to write something. Um, I did see something last week that I should probably take another look at and, and write about it. It was a um, performance of The Turn of the Screw. Um, I don't know if you know the Henry James novel. Um, it's a Benjamin Britten opera. And it's just amazing. Just amazing. And I thought it was done very well. So I, I should take another look at it. Just watch it again all the way through and write about it. Because I miss writing in my music, I do. <sighs> okay. So I've been running my mouth for a while. I'm going to put up the uh, StreamYard link again if anybody wants to uh, come up. Um... um I'm sorry if I'm missing people in the chat because I'm just running my mouth. Ah, Laurie. Oh, Laurie. You, you hit the nail on the head about the soap opera act actress I was mentioning. She says, I'm pretty sure she knows how old she is. She's also privileged to have such longevity in that career. Yes, yes. That's why I, in the end, I, I, I wished I had approached her. Um, I was just afraid I was going to say something that would come out clumsy, but um, I hope that even if I had, she would have appreciated the intent. So this is a Tuesday. We used to, um, on Tuesdays at three o'clock, we used to go and see Brenda the Newbie Crocheter, but she no longer does her three o'clock lives on Tuesdays. Um, so we can keep going as long as we want. Um, 
Um, let's keep on. Tell me more. So, oh, please click my uh, link tree uh, link. You can see all of my links. I have three blogs. I have Ravelry. I have Etsy. Um, God only knows what else I have there. I have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. So, um, I would appreciate your um, interest in any of those, especially the Ravelry. Yeah, Daddy needs some pattern sales to um, to pay for this road trip coming up. What should we talk about now? We almost always wind up talking about food. I have some Ben and Jerry's ice cream here. My, um, one of the supermarkets, I was surprised to find they had it on sale, two for five bucks. Okay, VJ asks about the difference between a Facebook page and a Facebook group. Um, a page, the intent of a page is really for posting news. The intent of a group is really for a community interaction. And um, I will admit I haven't paid. Well, everything that I post to Instagram, and I try to post just about every day to Instagram. Everything that goes to Instagram um, goes to the Facebook page as an announcement. I have not paid as much attention to the Facebook group as I might. I would like to see the group grow. Um, so yeah, basically it's notifications versus um, interaction at the, at the bottom level, really. Mm. Lori, who works basically as a supervisor of cafeteria ladies, is saying that the food supply chain problems are a pain in the patootie of late. Actually, that's what we read about uh, supply chain with nearly everything. That's why you know, I read uh, um, automotive magazines. I watch automotive videos. There's a lot. Hey, Gina. There's a lot about how hard it is um, to get new stuff and how expensive everything is now because there's not enough new stuff. Um, VJ is asking about trolls. Honestly, I have been remarkably fortunate. Knock on wood. Um, I have not had many trolls. Um, I, um, Honestly, I haven't had any, any unpleasant comments. Now, I do have some moderators who have told me that they have intercepted unpleasant comments on my behalf and deleted them without my knowing it. Um, and I sort of wish I hadn't told me that. But I have not seen very many unpleasant comments on YouTube or on Facebook. <coughs> Excuse me. 
most of the critical comments I get are really more about my technology or lack thereof or lack of technolo technological skill than anything else. Yes, Laurie, if you're selling a car, it's a great time to be selling a used car. If you're buying a new or used car, it's a horrible time to be doing that. And most auto journalists are saying to wait unless you absolutely have to get one. If, you, if your car is dead or totaled or something like that. <clears throat> Otherwise, wait uh, until things change. Oh, Lauren thinks her phone knows. Hey, Inherited Stitches. Lauren thinks her phone knows that she is replacing it soon. Granny, you have some great mods. I have good mods. I love my mods. Um... Also, if anybody wants to do testing for me, send me a message privately for my patterns. Um, but, um, you know, I, I, I have been very fortunate. It has been my observation that men do not get the kind of troll abuse that women do. I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's good that anyone ever gets abuse. But that's an observation. Um, so I will say that I've just been fortunate about that. And, you know, I can have an acid tongue if I see a, a comment and feel inclined to reply to it then I just might do that. Um, but I haven't seen in, in live streams, I really haven't seen any mean comments. Maybe I'm just blind or in denial or something. Because um, I know there are mean people out there. That's true. But... Um, BJ, you, I would not say that necessarily. It depends on how big your group grows. If it grows large, you might want to add moderators to help you um, determine, uh, you know, when people apply for membership, whether that person should be admitted or not. When people, um, like, uh, disobey the rules, whether they should be kicked out, that sort of thing. Um, but honestly, um, you know, as with a lot of things, it's better to just wait until you need it. Like if you're in business, uh, and people say, oh, should I form an LLC? Wait until you need it. You know, um, if, if it looks like you need it. Um, then it might be a good thing to add. If everybody else has it and you don't, that's not a good enough reason to do it. Just my opinion. Nightbot just posted my Ravelry link, people, again. Wow. Laurie, tell us what kind of car it is.
Well, Lauren, um, <clears throat> Lauren is wondering whether she can handle uh, pattern testing. She might. She she thinks she might not be fast enough. <clears throat> Start out with a pattern that the creator labels as easy and do what you can on your own time. And if it's not ready when the creator wants it, then, then it's not. And if it is, then you've helped the creator. I mean, no matter what you do, you're helping the creator, particularly if you're pointing out to the creator ways in which that person might communicate more clearly. That is the most valuable thing to me. I used to be a business writer. I was in the business of trying to communicate clearly between people uh, of different backgrounds. I was like the liaison between the technical people and the business people. Um, so I believe I have a certain amount of skill in that area, uh, but at the same time, I value learning from people who tell me that mm, you could do that a little better. I might throw a hissy fit at first, never at the person, but I just, you know, I, uh, the whole self flagellation thing, oh, woe is me, I'm so awful, I'm so awful, I can't write it off. And then I like get a grip and I say, yes, that's a good observation, thank you. I will incorporate that. Um, so anyway, if you um, if you're inclined to try it, just start out with a, uh, something that the the pattern creator calls simple, and do it on your own time, and let the creator know that. Uh, whether you can meet his, his or her deadline or not. If there is a deadline, I usually don't put a deadline. Um, I will usually, I don't call it a deadline. I'll say that I want to uh, post, uh, publish this pattern within this amount of time. So I guess that is a deadline, isn't it? So, why? what else is going on? Tell me everything, people. So pretty soon, we're probably going to have to call it a day. I normally, I used to be in the habit of going about an hour because we would always move on to But Laurie, you have given me really good insights into some of my patterns. So do not say that about yourself. Um, we used to go just an hour because then we would just move on to Brenda the Newby Crocheter, but she no longer does her 3 p.m. live streams on Tuesdays. So we're not really limited by time. But... Um, Usually my best live streams are between an hour and an hour and a half. So I think that we're probably going to call it a day pretty soon. And then we'll, um, tomorrow I'm on at 6 o'clock p.m. immediately following Granny D. So I look forward to seeing you then. On Wednesdays we have no topic at all. On Tuesdays we start out pretending we have a topic. We talk about it for a little while and then we just move on to other things. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, just recapping, uh, my, I have the, you know, my schedule, topic Tuesday, Wednesday, free for all, Friday, not so spontaneous Fridays, Sunday readings, Monday men, you know, the whole thing. Um... And then also I have Ravelry, I have Etsy. I will soon be moving my merch over to a different provider, but in the meantime, Etsy is still working. 
Um, I have Cash App, I have PayPal, I have Super Chats here on YouTube, I have Patreon, I have YouTube membership levels. Um, I would invite you to investigate any one of those because Daddy just put out a bunch of money for postage and has a road trip coming up with the intention of improving his channel. Having a good time and improving his channel. And uh, let's see, what else was I going to talk about? Oh, oh, oh. More marathons. I like to do marathons on holidays. Most recently, I did a Labor Day marathon. That was fun. Um, oh, Jackie, that sounds like a lot of fun. That sounds really cool. Lauren, I do mostly shawls, if you are interested. Uh, anyway, um, I'm going to do a Halloween um, marathon. That's on a Sunday. That will also coincide with the anniversary of my very first yarn video posting which was on October 30th of last year. I did one earlier that was pretty awful, and I took it down. Um, I will do one on Black Friday, the day after American Thanksgiving, um, just in case you don't want to face those awful, awful, awful crowds. Um, I will do one on New Year's... Oh, I will do... My Wednesday free-for-all for December 8th, which is my birthday, is going, is going to be a birthday party, a uh, 2K celebration, because I hope that at that time I will have hit 2K, and there will be prizes then. Uh, there are not going to be any prizes between now and then, because I've had a bunch of us to pay for this week. Um, I'm going to do uh, one on New Year's Day as well. And then I have my regular schedule. So I um, plan to keep publishing new patterns every month. I plan to keep writing in my blogs. I plan to stay up to date on YouTube, although it's hard because there's so many YouTube channels that I follow that I, I can't keep up with them all. So... Oh, Joanne, you're December 10th? Good. Excellent. Um, anyway, that's my story, and I'm stuck into it. And since we've been here about an hour and 25 minutes, I think I'm going to call it a day. It's been a lot of fun. I'm going to thank you all for coming, and I would just say, oops, I'm going to change the angle so you can see that plaque up there which brand is the new crocheter created her husband anyway um so i would just say to everyone who's been with me all this time and anybody who just came in just to like subscribe comment share all the standard youtube crap and keep coming back and um, thank you all. I'm going to click end now. Bye-bye.